and I'm a student member of Student Welfare Group. And I have with me my co-host Parth Nanda, who is also a student member of Student Welfare Group. So without much ado, let's get to know more about our esteemed panelists. Abhijay, would you please introduce yourself to us? Okay, so I'm a fourth year undergraduate uh, in the Department of Electrical Engineering. And this summer I interned at Salesforce as a software engineering intern. Thank you, Abhijay. Anshul, would you please introduce yourself to us? Hello. Yeah. So, good evening, everyone. And I'm an undergraduate department of engineering. Uh, Anshul, I think so. There's some issue with the mic. Like, uh, can you reconfigure it? Uh, hello. Yeah. Is this fine? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So, good evening, everyone. Myself, Anshul Tembre, and I'm a fourth year undergraduate from the Department of Electrical Engineering, enrolled in its BTEC course of Instrumentation Engineering. And yeah, this summer I interned at Credit Suisse in its Quantstat division. Thank you, Anshul. Thank you. Pratyush, would you please introduce yourself to us? Hello, everyone. I'm Pratyush Saha. I'm a fourth year undergraduate from the Department of Electrical Engineering, and I did my summer intern at Microsoft as a data and applied scientist. Thank you, Pratyush. Pat, would you please introduce yourself to us? Hi everyone, this is Bharat. Uh, I interned with LEK Consulting as a strategy consultant. Okay, thank you, Bharat. Atharva, please give a brief intro about yourself. Yeah, hi, I'm Atharva Agle. So I was an intern at Deutsche Bank and I received a pre-placement offer from there. Okay, and your department, Atharva? I'm from the Department of Chemical Engineering and Financial Planning. Okay. Okay, so now let's get started with the questions. So the first question is, how did you get, get started with the given profile? Abhijay, would you like to go first? Yeah, so for me, like uh, solving problems always came natural. So like uh, the closest thing to JE, which I found in college was CP. So I kept on doing CP from second year and I realized that there was actually a job with it. That is software engineering. And yes, so like by default, I went into it. So Pratyush, would you like to take this now? Yeah, so uh, during the first two years of my college, I was uh, highly motivated towards uh, core engineering, core electrical engineering. But after the lockdown in March 2020, I started exploring the field of ML and data science, and I actually found it quite intriguing and interesting. So I continued it uh, for the next four to five months rigorously and applied for this role through CDC and I got the opportunity. Okay, Anshul, would you like to go next? Uh, right, so for me, it was like uh, from my first year, I was inclined toward exploring various things in CDC. And, uh, and similar, similarly, uh, I, was, I, I had explored many profiles like machine learning, coding, finance itself. And I came to know that I do like finance a bit. And uh, at the same time, I was inclined towards data. So yeah, so these two things are the core uh, intricacies of quant profile itself. And so this is how I started to get introduced to this profile. And I, then I did a few courses. And this is how I had started it. Okay. Parth, would you like to go now? Sure. So from the beginning of college, I was interested in uh, business and strategy roles. Uh, and then I joined the first and, you know, made a profile that was suitable for management and strategy. And thus, you know, uh, I've been a part of a lot of uh, startups as a product manager and, you know, it developed, uh, developed more interest through the field of strategy and consulting, uh, solving case studies and you know, doing estimates. So it was a relevant profile to go for, to, for me. Okay. Uh, Adhar, would you like now, like to go now? Yeah, sure. So, um, like I said, I've been enrolled in the financial planning course uh, right after my first year. So uh, we, as a part of the financial planning course, you have one subject almost every semester. Uh, so right from our second year, we had subjects like corporate finance and economics. So 
they they are like good courses which have like good introductory concepts so that is what really sparked my interest in the start and um, i think at the end of the sec- end of my second year i had pursued an internship uh, kpmg which was uh, primarily focused on a substream of finance itself so that is where i really got interested in finance okay uh, so now let's go to the next question okay so the next question is how did you choose this profile did you explore other profiles as well okay so uh, pratyush can you go now first yeah so uh, as i already mentioned yeah i did explore the core engineering profile as well in the first two years i was uh, highly inclined towards electronics and stuff and uh, last year march i started exploring this uh, field of ml and data science i first did that uh, specialization in course of uh, for the deep learning uh, and i was quite interested in this field and then uh, after that i put more efforts and then started exploring this field so in this way i uh, chose this uh, particular profile okay parth now uh, can you go on sure so after my second year itself i was intrigued with the fields of product management i did a couple of enters in the field and uh, eventually developed an interest in the field of strategy itself uh, though not a lot of firms come for the product management role in the internship uh, one one firm comes for consulting role so i sat for consulting profiles and for one finance firm yeah those were the two roles i targeted yeah that's it okay okay thank you. so now uh, atharv can you go next yeah sure so um basically this the, the decision that i took to pursue finance was majorly like i said after my um, after my second year when i interned at kpmg uh, from your third year you do start to think about which profile you want to get into or what could be a strong suit so i realized pretty soon that coding or software profiles weren't something i was very inclined towards so uh, also my core subjects of chemical engineering they were interesting but not as much as finance so i did keep that option open as well i did explore a little bit in my core uh, but as far as cdc was concerned but uh, finance was always my first preference and um, yeah i think that's where i was really genuinely interested so uh, anshul what was your experience with this okay so for me it was not especially choosing quant profile as such since it was quite a new profile new profile left for me at that time uh, but yeah i had certain profiles in mind during my cdc internship which we were in cdc internships which included data and consulting and finance as such so this was one of the and this particular role was one of the roles that came in that particular basket so and i had applied for this one and yeah uh, consequently i got this and that is how i was uh, chosen for it <laughs> uh, apart from that i had explored other profiles as well as i told that i had In in data finance consulting is also, yeah, and a bit of software. Uh, Vijay, uh, would you like to take this next? Yeah. So from my second year only, like uh, I started exploring uh, various profiles like machine learning, uh, software engineering, and uh, some others like uh, deep learning, etc. But slowly, like I realized that I liked uh, doing CP more, and hence, like I got a little bit more. uh like driven towards software engineering because i didn't get like i didn't like research as much as uh, the core field of engineering so so like i uh, that eliminated machine learning deep learning etc for me and yeah so i said to the here okay okay um, so let's go to the next question um so what resources would be needed to explore your profile so any one of the panelists would like to go first Okay, so uh, I'm sure I'll go. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so for consulting roles, I think uh, what you need for the interviews would be case studies and estimates. A good way to prepare for these profiles is definitely sitting for you know off campus prior to CDC internships. Definitely product management and other consulting firms if possible. Consulting firms usually don't hire off campus, but you can definitely go for product management internship as you know 
the preparation for it is usually in like the path is the same for them you have to do a lot of case studies you have to do guesstimates resources would be the standard case books there are a lot of case books to refer to the im case book the isb case book even kgb has its own case book now written by a few of my friends so those case books and in general discussions with you know you usually have a case group of five to six people you practice cases with them you do guesstimates and all so best way to prepare for this kind of role is basically brainstorming with your friends on different cases and different guesstimates a basic guesstimate could be anything from number of milk you take milk you intake every day to you know number of birds in australia something like that so it's all about brainstorming and thinking out loud that you know how how can you reach out how can you reach to a numeric solution to any kind of problem okay anyone else would like to go now sure so uh, i uh, can talk about finance so um most if if you look at it from an interview perspective of uh, usually dif different finance firms could have different interviews uh, in my case i tell you like for example uh, deutsche bank had a much more cv focused interview uh, there is a little bit weightage given to uh, hr questions and there are there's a little bit also given to other technical aspects like puzzles or guesstimates and um, i mean obviously for the latter there are a lot of resources out there so a lot of people which most people know about right um, there are there's there is book on fifth uh, probability problems there is heard in the street so all these are always there which people can refer to um probability is another very important uh, aspect which is asked in interviews uh, they could they could also very rarely cases can be involved in finance interviews but not very much seen uh, guesstimates and puzzles are there too if you talk about finance specific not a lot of firms expect you to have a lot of finance knowledge at the interview internship interview level but if you want to gather certain amount of basic knowledge then uh, there are certain resources out there like zeroda modules there's investopedia you have a vault guide which is a very short basic revision of finance concepts some people i think even use uh, cfafrm books if they start pretty early although those take time so i wouldn't say i went through all of these myself per se but uh, these in, it would have been useful if you do go through them uh, and you're beginning from a very early stage so yeah like right. uh, and con continuing with for quant so for someone who is new to this profile there are various resources available on internet uh, if i mention some of these then there are various resources on youtube and coursera uh, courses on coursera there is also a course uh, on nptel from iit guwahati apart from that there are blogs on investopedia there are ep chance blogs and quantinsty and there are many others and there is also a very good github repository consolidated by pai patel on quant finance resources if possible then i'll share this link with you afterwards apart from that <clears throat> so it's similar to other profiles like there are puzzles and problems probability and statistics so for prop stats the major resource for me personally was the uh, institute courses the iit kharagpur courses in prop stats apart from that for practice there are books like heard on the street and 50 challenging problems as well as in things so <clears throat> so yeah yes uh, so for the data science role uh, you have for the uh, from the interview perspective and the selection rounds we have to be proficient with python programming and uh, then a little bit knowledge of tsc is also required not to the extent uh, in which it is asked in software engineering roles but yes they would ask you program and prop stats is a uh, uh, compulsory and mandatory prerequisite so for that as anshul said uh, the institute courses are more than sufficient and you have to learn the algorithms from for machine learning and data science so for that there are multiple blogs and also from, you can learn from youtube or coursera and, uh, and apart from that there is also a uh, part of statistics which they focus like on hypothesis testing and everything so that is also present uh, in the data analytics course of the institute 
and uh, or you can just learn it from YouTube. It's not that a big deal. You have to practice uh, programming a little bit. OK, so coming to SWE roles, so like initially in second year, there's a course offered by CS department called Algo and Algo Lab. So I think that's pretty much mandatory if you want to go for SWE roles, like it will improve your uh, grasp on algorithms and uh, data structures. So that's uh, very much essential if you want uh, to get into SWE roles. And apart from that, what you need to do is like uh, I would suggest it's better to go for CP like uh, competitive programming is not uh, like compulsory for SWE roles, but it always helps because it will uh, like improve your grasp on solving problems and the rate at which you solve like the speed, etc. So these uh, often matter in technical interviews because th the interviews are time limited and you are required to solve problems within that time limit. So if you are like uh, like if you solve problems in CP uh, very frequently, then then like there's a good chance that you will be actually able to solve uh, questions in the interview as well. So yeah, so CP helps and uh, like the major resource for getting into SWE roles is definitely lead code. So it's very much recommended that you solve problems on lead code just before the interviews. Uh, interview bit is also another website which uh, I would say that you should like like there's a whole a bunch of problems in interview bit and it's always better to like complete the whole set at least once or twice before you sit for the interviews. So yeah, like uh, that's good enough for SW intern and like it always helps if uh, like you already have an intern beforehand. So like you already have the experience of pushing code, uh, merging, rebasing, etc. So like a good knowledge on Git is important. Okay, now moving on. What skill sets, according to you, are quintessential for your particular profile and how to develop them? Pratyush, should you like to start? Yeah, as I uh, already mentioned uh, on the prerequisites, like skill sets, you have to be proficient uh, with Python, and uh, in the internship, you would uh, you are most likely to get a project in which deep learning would be involved. So. Uh, you should have a grasp on a particular framework, either TensorFlow or PyTorch, and uh, you should have a habit of reading research papers because you have to take inspiration from others' work before you proceed. And then uh, a, a basic knowledge of uh, data structures is uh, required because you have to make solutions which are both memory and time efficient. So. Yeah, these are the particular skill sets uh, according to me which are required. And apart from that, as I already mentioned, that probability statistic is asked in the interview, but it won't be that much applicable to you during the internship. And a basic idea of uh, databases like SQL databases is uh, would be very much uh, beneficial for you. It would give you an upper hand during the internship. Anshul, would you like to go next? Uh, right, so for quant, the skill set is quite uh, similar to that compared to data science. So uh, to list down things, it would be first would be a good knowledge of probability and statistics. Uh, apart from that, uh, person should be uh, uh, you should be efficient in uh, efficient proficient in coding uh, in any one language at least. And uh, apart from that, the the knowledge of finance and machine learning would always be a plus, but these are not necessary. Adharb, would you like to go next? Yeah, sure. So um, for a finance profile, uh, I don't think there is any defined skill set which is there, at least in terms of acquiring a CDC intern. Not a lot of firms will expect you to, you know, have any sort of vast knowledge of finance or uh, any like pers even a background is not needed per se. Um, having said that, um, like having basic knowledge is good and that will give you an edge over other candidates so you should always prepare for that um there are qualities which firms might look for in you so uh, if if i if i can think of certain qu uh, qualities at the top of my head they would want people who um, are good at logical reasoning uh, critical thinking 
you should have a good way of communicating what you want to communicate and uh, be confident while you're doing that right so when you're presenting any ideas they should be presented in a structured manner um another thing is presence of mind and this is in fact tested as well so in some interviews they can just ask you quick math questions so um in a pressure in a in an interview session in an interview situation where there's a lot of pressure you're given a sudden quick math problem and you're told to solve it very fast so a uh, lot of candidates can't go through that so you have to be very calm and um you know have your have that presence of mind to answer those questions um you should all, uh, another important thing is you should have in depth knowledge of any work that you have done in your previous projects or it done so not just the work that you have done but anything related to that or anything around it um which it could be a finance intern or not but you need to know the work that you have done um and uh, when you talk about building on the qualities that i mentioned before um it's there are a lot of ways to make a communication better i think pe people know about all of that thinking ability is enhanced when you do puzzles and like you stimulate your mind in different ways you think about uh, different puzzles in different ways right so that helps always and yeah finance knowledge can be acquired using the resources that i mentioned before so yeah other part do you like to add anything So, so pretty much to what uh, Sir was said, uh, strategy. You know, structured thinking is very important for any consulting role. Apart from that, again, CV is very important, and clear and concise communication skills are also very important. Uh, to you know, to stand out from the crowd that is applying for the roles, uh, I would suggest to have a good CGPA, probably above 8.5. That's usually the select, you know, shortlisting criteria for most of the consulting firms. Apart from that, on-campus involvements that would help you develop, you know. a better communication skills would be participating in more events or being a part of some cell or a fest that is definitely helpful and you know gets you the spikes on your profile that is one for uh, you know getting your profile shortlisted for prep it's mostly how good you can you are able to you know, communicate what you are yeah so pretty much what athav said uh, mostly uh, how good you are able to communicate how you are thinking through the thinking through the case and uh, how definitely quick calculations in mathematics for uh, guesstimates makes sense uh, like if i want to estimate uh, any number let's say 5% of 179 you should be very quick with that and you should be good with numbers you should not make any you know calculation errors that's a very bad sign in any type of interview and definitely a very bad sign in any consulting interview definitely Abhijay, would you like to add anything else? Yeah, so pretty much what Arthur said, like it is very essential how you communicate with the team because in software interns, what you are going to do is you will be working with a team. So a team uh, usually has one or two interns, or some in some cases even more. Uh, it has some uh, some normal engineers like people who are S S D one, uh, people who are S D two. That means like in a relatively senior level and people who are senior software engineers so like you need to communicate with them which problems you are facing which uh, things can be improved or if you uh, like if you think that the pipeline is not really what you want it to be uh, there's some issues in the code etc so it's really important that you communicate with the team and uh, definitely for sw interns what you need is problem solving so you need to be very efficient and uh, very quick at solving problems that is uh, competitive programming and uh, uh, like during the interviews uh, in third year if you are a cs guy then they may actually ask you uh, dbms networks oops uh, questions on these so uh, and even if you are not uh, like you may be asked and uh, it may happen that you do not like you have to answer so like in my case i said that i didn't have these courses being from non cs background so like i was excused and i was only asked questions on cp but it may not be the case always and like you always need to know how to write good code right because when you are trying to impress the interviewer you need to like your code should be actually very neat uh, like the variable name shouldn't be just x y z etc so you need to write proper variable names proper good code and finally it's uh, like you should explain to them how the algorithm walks through and you should you should like walk through the code and explain them the time and space complexity of the algorithm and if it can be improved any further 
OK, so let's go to the next question. OK, so uh, would you please share the general selection procedure for your particular profile during the CDC internship drive? Anyone would like to go first? Right for <clears throat> OK, so for quant profile, it uh, mostly depends on the company as such, but uh, in general, it involves certain shortlisting tests that checks object that checks your uh, skills on prop stats and coding coding skills. Uh, and problem solving problem solving skills, which involves puzzles. And after the shortlisting test, once the people have shortlisted for interviews, there are I guess three or four rounds of interviews. One of them might be HR and all of these three rounds of interviews. Uh, one important aspect is the CV that you need to prepare. Apart from that, uh, the people or uh, the interviewers ask your again drill you down on your CV and ask you questions related to prop stats and coding. This is more or less it in general. Anyone else would like to chip in? Yeah, so uh, for the data science role, it again depends from company to company. Uh, I can tell that from uh, for Microsoft, uh, you would have a screening test first of all. So in our time, we had a one hour test of 50 questions uh, and it was um, on ML prop stats and a uh, few questions were also there from ideal. But this time they changed the pattern and uh, they had two coding questions on Python and it was again related to machine learning. It was not that tough, only the key was that if you can uh, think properly at the first go, then it was a very uh, means quite a normal question only. And then after the initial screen test, we will be having interview rounds. So in my case, there were two rounds, uh, but in general, there are say two to three rounds. And the first round would be technical and they would ask you uh, questions uh, on uh, DSA. And you have to code uh, in front of them. Uh, uh, value scheme would be shared and then uh, in the second round there were uh, questions regarding to ML and for prop stats. And in the third, the third round would be mostly HR where you would be asked questions regarding your CV. In my case, the second half of the uh, second round was only HR, where they asked a very generic HR questions, and then uh, questions were asked related to the uh, CV. Okay. Um, so, anyone else would like to take from it? Yeah. So. Like for my case, there was a total of five rounds for Salesforce. Initially, there was one shortlisting round, which was followed by three technical interviews and one HR round on the final interview day. So like in the first round, that is the shortlisting round, there were basically three problems and like one of them only was uh, very, uh, quite difficult. Like the other two ones were uh, quite, were like not much difficult. Like if you practice uh, a lot on code forces, etc., like you would be easily able to solve them. And finally, like the third question was a bit difficult and coming to the next round so that is on the interview day there were basically uh, like three technical rounds and uh, among those three technical rounds the first round was uh, first round was quite easy like it was uh, it there was a question on a dp on trees things like that and in the second round there were two problems and uh, i don't actually remember what the problems were but they were like a bit harder than what was there in the first round and finally we had Fine, like later we had an HR round and that was followed by uh, another technical round and that technical round was uh, like there was a very tough question there which was uh, like it, it was probably an NP hard problem so they didn't want me to give the exact solution but uh, an optimal sol like a solution like which is uh, approximately the best one which you can find like you can uh, create an approximate algo and uh, explain them like how what is the a row that is the approximation factor of the algorithm. Yeah. Okay, so anyone else would like go to go for consulting? I'll go for consulting uh, companies. So usually what happens is first you'll have a CV based shortlist. Uh, then they, they look for two or three spikes in your CV. Two, three spikes could be you know the CGPA, your past experiences, 
your pors your extra curriculars and inter id is definitely a plus point in the extra curriculars after the cv shortlisting there is usually so the process for consulting company starts uh, well before dz you'll have at least 2 3 weeks with before uh, when the shortlist is released you'll have 2 3 weeks till day 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 1 in those two three weeks you will be having buddy rounds buddy rounds are basically you are allotted a buddy who works at works as works as an associate in the firm itself you solve cases with them then it's non evaluative but it gives you a general idea of what the interviews would look like after the buddy rounds uh, there are usually three to four rounds there is no hr round per se every round is a mix of hr and cases and guesstimates so uh, the cases would uh, range from guesstimates profitability or market entry strategy the rounds would be taken by associates managers and consultants all the rounds are uh, you know partially hr where they talk will will they talk talk about your cv will they also talk about your in campus involvements and all other things and apart from that each round contains at least one uh, guesstimate uh, and a profitability or a market entry strategy in the final round you'll you'll be faced by a partner or a principal that would basically be a discussion type of round will you'll probably work on an unconditional case maybe something like uh, you know there are pirates on an, on an island and you want to do something so the last round is basically a weird round if you can uh, bucket your thoughts and uh, you know uh, present it in a structured way in a bucketed form that should be helpful yeah okay so um, i'll take it over for finance uh, is again the first cv shortlist is very similar to what pa- what parth mentioned for consulting if you look at your cgpa any uh, good interns with uh, good brand names or startups or any research projects which are more relevant to that profile um good pors and extra curriculars that uh, basically consists of a cv shortlist uh, there are also tests which are there before uh, and they do carry weightage as well so different firms have different types of tests um, in general they will be testing your uh, quantitative and verbal abilities uh, some could have short case studies um, some could be testing your situational judgment skills uh, some firms like nomura for example have group discussions as well so uh, it helps to keep updated on current events or certain topics which are talked about um, widely um talking about deutsche uh, i mean so the pro- interview process had uh, so first of all there was a situational judgment test which we had it's pretty simple nothing that you can prepare for uh, it's something which you have to use your uh, judgment and give uh, once you shortlisted based on your cv and the situational test there are three rounds so um, a lot of like i said a most part of these interview rounds was cv based it's and there is no uh, segregation based on hr or cv or technical all rounds have merged have a sort of merged combination of these three um but yeah a lot of them ask you about what you've done in your intern and in in depth questions or they can like tweak questions and ask you uh, in terms of hr they can ask you uh, weird instances where you have to you have you kind of should be prepared with certain situations which you can talk about uh, when it comes to hr questions like they might ask you for instances where you have where you failed and um, you know you you had your back against the wall and like you have uh, still like overcome that you overcame that failure and like uh, yeah got on with your work so any any such situation any such situation which can come to your which can come to your way um technical it they asked me a short guesstimate as well and um other than that there were a lot of uh, quick math questions as well so again like they don't test you a lot on your finance knowledge like i said uh, it might be there if you have certain things written down in your cv but yeah that's pretty much it Okay, so moving on to the next question, uh, did you do any internships or projects before your CDC internship? Abhijay, would you like to start? So yeah, like uh, for my case, I actually had done an internship. So, so it was in the second year. So in second year winter, like I did an internship on 
like it was an SW intern it itself under a professor in EC department in IIT Kharagpur. So that actually gave me an experience on how to like how the corporate culture is basically like though it happened in KGP, it was like uh, the company was a startup uh, which was created by that professor himself and they employed people from outside the campus. So it was almost like a corporate culture. So I like got a bit of an exposure from there and yeah, like it did impact me uh, like uh, in the way that during my CDC uh, internship interviews, they actually asked me about what I did during that intern and whether I was able to like communicate with the others and uh, like how my project went through and what was my contribution, etc. So yes, that actually helped. But you should you like to go next? Yeah, so as I said that I started preparing for this role in March 2020 and within the five months, I couldn't do that much of a uh, impactful internship, but yeah, I did one intern uh, in a startup and it was on data mining, not exactly on data science, but it did give me an idea regarding the corporate world and how to uh, communicate with your team members and manage your priorities and everything. And uh, yeah, pretty much that. Anshul, would you like to go next? Uh, yeah, so I had did one internship before uh, my CDC. It was yeah, it was it was an internship in analytics uh, based on deep learning. Uh, and yeah, did it did impact my uh, internship selection since where various questions were asked were asked uh, related to this internship to me during the in, uh, interviews. Apart from that, uh, I had done a few uh, I had done a few competitions and projects in machine learning and on Kaggle, which were also handy. Pat, uh, would you like to go next? Sure. So uh, prior to CDC, I worked. Uh, I did two internships, I think. First was uh, as a product manager with a startup, and another one was as a strategy consultant with another consulting firm. So the consulting experience really gave me a more insight towards what the role would look like, and I was prepared with a lot of skills, like you know, in general interview prep for consulting roles was the estimates and all. Internships are very impactful in general for any kind of interview, I think that everyone on the panel would agree with that uh, your internship and what you write on your CV is actually it's a very valid discussion point during an during an interview. You need to justify what you did. If you're mentioning any metric or if you're mentioning any uh, result that you came across with, you you'll need to explain it at how you came to that result. Why did you apply that particular solution? So it's very important to, you know, uh, choose good internships, do good work in them and then no, present it in a way that seems like okay, this guy knows what he is doing, and uh, the things he has written on his CV is uh, actually the right ones. He's not faking anything. So yeah, that's the key thing. Do interns. Interns is very, interns are very important in general. Uh, I would suggest everyone to go for at least one corporate intern before CDC, and try to get an intern with something that is aligned to what you'll be going to apply for CDC, and uh, you know, portray it in a way that the CDC target firm finds the appealing. Thank you, Parth. Adhar, would you like to add anything? Yeah, I think Parth has covered almost all points here. So um, like he said, in, uh, internships are going to be talked about a lot in your interview. So um, if you like your interview usually lasts longer when you have internships, which you can talk about or projects you can talk about, which are more relevant and the interviewer can take that direction in terms of his questions, right? So um, in my case, uh, I interned at uh, KPMG uh, in after my second year and after my third year, I interned at a, a, a loan disbursement startup, which was a little more on the technical side. KPMG was a little more on the finance side, so it was related to substream of finance, which is derivatives. So uh, what I'd suggest is if possible, you should try like building a diverse profile with different kinds of interns and different kinds of projects. So 
yeah there should be a certain amount of diversity on your cv which shows um it's again not necessary that all of it should be finance related certain a little bit of it should could also show that you are interested on the technical side as well um there could be term projects which you can include there can be competitions which you can do i had a certain equity research competition which i had put into my cv as well so um yeah these really help and uh, like i said if whatever you are putting in your cv you should be prepared to talk about that in depth and answer anything and everything that can be related to that uh, those interns or projects whatever because they can go into a lot of depth while they question so that's very important yeah that's it thank you Atar. moving on how to uh, get internships and projects before ctc can you walk us through the process other would you like to start um how to get internships or projects before so um before your cdc uh, there are just uh, two three different methods which most people use so uh, first of all being a lot of people use their contacts to get internships now that's rare so if it is if you don't have contacts you can always um, use cold mailing itself so Cold mailing will follow. There is a certain procedure which you should follow. Uh, go through the internet, look for firms or startups which you think you would be interested in. Make a list. Uh, find. First of all, you need to have a really good LinkedIn profile, and for whoever who doesn't have one, should really work on uh, connecting and networking with more people through LinkedIn itself. That is really really important. Uh, from from there, you start getting contacts and. Um, you know that is where you can really uh, start your whole process of connecting through with hrs and all so yeah uh, that is what most people usually follow so yeah anshul would you like to go next uh, right so as i have mentioned so there are few limited processes that we can follow one of them would be LinkedIn. Other can be websites like uh, Dare to Compete, Internshala, and all of those. Uh, then there are certain. If you want to do a research internship, then uh, there are certain uh, uh, programs in Kharagpur itself. Apart from that, uh, there are contacts, of course, and yeah, these are more or less the ways that people follow to get an internship. Pat, do you like to add anything to this? I think most of the points have been covered, but yeah, in case you're not able to you know, get a hold of a good internship off campus or nothing is being uh, converted through LinkedIn cold mailing or LinkedIn or through cold mailing, you can in any time reach out to your seniors who have worked with you know, your target firms as a off campus intern and probably ask them for contact. That usually helps in most of the cases as the HRs usually, usually remain the same over the period of one year. Apart from that, there are several platform that you can refer to. I did not refer to them personally, but I have some friends who have gone through them. Maybe something like Trinity or, you know, there are similar other programs which guarantee you internship and you know, they provide you with training and all. Uh, I have not gone through them, but in case you're not able to get hold of anything through mailing and all, that's a good option to also consider. Avijay, uh, uh, would you like to add something to this? Yeah, so along with the points that already have been mentioned, I would just add that uh, it's always better to have a good network of friends. So in case someone gets hold of an intern and that firm is actually like looking for another one, then you uh, like that guy can refer you as a possible candidate and you can interview for it. So like okay. having friends always helps. OK, so like Abhijay, we had a question from the chat, which was along the same line. So like someone asked that for students having uh, CDC in the upcoming summer, uh, should they focus on getting internships now or they should they focus on like uh, honing their CP skills for the SWA profile? I would say like till April, you should uh, focus on honing your skills and then like you should uh, like. Keep uh, doing interview bits, etc. Like if you get an intern, it's always good. But if you don't have one, like for many people, it often is the case that their, their first intern is a CDC intern. So like it's not a big deal to worry about. Like, yeah. But yeah, definitely like having an intern always helps. So if you can get an intern, that's good. If you can't, then like go on doing CV. Okay. 
Pratish, do you have anything to add? Or any of you would like to add anything else? No, apart from whatever has been said, uh, only one small thing to add that. Uh, if you are unable to get internship in corporate world, so no need to get that much disheartened. And you can always try to reach out to professors from IIT KGB itself. Like you can uh, go to the web, uh, website of a particular department like CS or uh, any other uh, department on which you target to get a project. And then you can mail them uh, with your proposal and everything. And most of the times, the profs are helpful and they can help you getting a meaningful project also. Okay. So moving on. Okay. Can you share your uh, oh, path? Let's go to the next question. Um, can you share your summer internship experiences? What did you work on? So um, any one of you can start answering this question. Yeah, so uh, regarding my internship, it was an online internship and the Microsoft's onboarding team is a very efficient uh, team and they would ensure that you have a very smooth onboarding throughout the eight or 10 weeks, which even the duration of the, your internship would be. And you can just uh, reach or uh, reach to them in case of any difficulty. And my work was on uh, multivariate anomaly detection in time series data. And uh, I had a team of uh, five members. And I had one another intern from IIT Kanpur. And the other three uh, members were uh, software, uh, were data scientists working already in Microsoft. At, uh, and they were quite helpful uh, to me. The uh, work hours were very flexible, like if your team decides that you should have a meeting at uh, 3 a.m. in the uh, morning, then you can also have a meeting at 3 a.m. in the morning and sleep throughout your day. Uh, it all depends on your uh, uh, cooperation and everything your team decides. But you have to have some boundaries, like you cannot disturb them during the weekends and everything. So, and apart from that, uh, in the technical ground, I had to read uh, a lot of papers, uh, papers in the be uh, beginning of the internship, like for the first one or two weeks, and then I had to get myself accustomed with their interface, uh, with their code base, understand them uh, for the next two to uh, two two weeks, and then <coughs> for the remaining uh, six weeks, I had a ten weeks center. Uh, I had to develop a solution and then try it on a small data set like say uh, six to eight gbs of uh, the data the entire data set was around 80 to 100 gb so uh, and if the solution was scalable then it would uh, be then proceeded towards deploying it uh, in the uh, process in the pipeline so that was pretty much about it and yes uh, it was quite smooth like if you have any doubt or anything you can always reach out to your mentors and everything they were very helpful and Supported. Yeah. Okay. Um, Parth, can you give some insights about uh, your experience? Sure. So I primarily worked on three cases. First one was basically a Canadian educational institute entering US markets. So we had to devise a market entry strategy for them. The second one was, you know, uh, it was a due diligence, a uh, sell side due diligence. A uh, private equity was selling uh, one of its assets to another private equity. So the, we had to do a due diligence and market market uh, landscape for that firm. The last one was the one which was which I was predominantly working on was another due diligence. That was a buy side due diligence. What that means is uh, company X was buying company Y for uh, about three million three hundred million dollars, and we were working on that deal uh, to you know probably forecast the financials and look at the future prospects of the company that was being acquired. So most of the work that you do is uh, working on Excel models, projecting financials and working on financial models and uh, you know, making a lot of PPTs. You spend a lot of time, you spend a lot of time working on PowerPoint and Excel per se. And uh, the working hours, they can be intimidating for some of us. Uh, so you usually start working at 10, working from 10 a.m. and then you know, the, if 
on good days the work will go on till 10 pm or 11 pm and on bad days you just pray to god that it doesn't go till you know 2 pm so uh, apart from that the team is really helpful you will probably be staffed in a team that has four to five people you would be the junior most one you would be the, so you would be working as an associate and you will have probably a consultant or a senior consultant and a manager who will be guiding you throughout the team is very helpful throughout if you face any problem working on some excel formulas or you know you don't know how to do a financial forecast then you know feel free to ask me and then they'll be helpful yeah that's all it's a pretty good experience but can be a bit tedious if you're not prepared for it good uh, anshul can you uh, tell the experience tell your experience with quant and done uh, <clears throat> right so i also had an online internship myself and uh, looking at the company so company the onboarding process was quite smooth and each of the intern was uh, allotted to one of the vp so it was that there were there were there was a team of five or six people each of them included an intern and other very experienced professionals so you were the junior most and you and it usually happens especially in investment banks is that they do not expect much from interns so you can consider that uh, you would be uh, able to get answer to any any question that you would be asking to the professionals there so that's the case uh, apart from that my project involved to describe it vaguely it involved use of uh, probability and statistics to back forecast the data on a credit spread time series uh, and yeah it was quite a good experience for two months and i got to learn a lot about the corporate world and quant itself being a field yeah abhijit would you like to go next yeah so like salesforce has one of the best work cultures in the world it is currently number 2 in the world uh, according to fortune so like my work hours were also very flexible i on an average i worked for about 5 hours a day and like the onboarding was very smooth so they provided everything that i needed including laptops etc and there were uh, awesome gifts and swags on regular intervals and what i worked on was basically i was allotted to salesforce's health cloud so what the health cloud does is basically it is uh, like trying to revolutionize the way uh, health is uh, like health is moving digitally uh, like it it is trying to move the health industry to the digital domain right so my project was basically to build an application that aim to recognize analyze and store data uh, automatically using the patient voice conversations so uh, basically i can't talk much about the work i did during the internship but it was a a spring boot application which i had to build it was a web app so using that web app uh, the patients which were trying to enter into a new medical uh, like industry etc so suppose uh, a hospital suppose a patient is trying to like uh, register himself to a new hospital in which like uh, he or she wants an appointment or something like then uh, all the conversation that he or she has to do with the healthcare registrar that is the one who is onboarding the patient will now be done completely digitally online through the web app so that was the web app which i built during that intern and it used nlp also so my main work was software engineering that is uh, to build a web application and like uh, the major part of it was back end in the last uh, so the the whole intern actually lasted for 8 weeks and during the first six weeks i mainly focus on the back end and later in the next two weeks uh, like i complete the web app with the front end also so that was the whole structure okay uh, athar can you tell you uh, about yourself your experience with yeah 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 so uh deutsche uh, first of all the one good thing that deutsche does was is uh, as soon as you start the first week will be a uh, so they hold a boot camp of finance where they have an instructor coming in uh, from yeah one of their instructors who come in and like teach you uh, the basic concepts of capital markets and things you might need or are helpful for your internship so that's the first week uh, after that everyone's allotted their projects so what i worked on i was a part of the counterparty portfolio management desk uh, basically what this desk does is it kind of kind of tries to hedge the risks which are present in the db fixed income portfolio trades so um i was looking at a certain parameter uh in this cva risk so my project was very research based 
it a lot of people uh, a lot of my co-intern colleagues they worked on projects which uh, involved them using uh, you know python or excel macros or certain other software sql as well a lot of them worked on different softwares my project as such was more research based uh, i had to use only excel and powerpoint and not very advanced features of them as well so uh, it involved going through a lot of research reports by credit rating agencies and um, you know looking at this parameter historically how it has varied across different markets how it has varied across time over time right so uh, that was what was my work um, another good thing that Deutsche does is uh, so it's an investment bank with a lot of different businesses going on at the same time right a lot of employees in there uh, so not every employee knows what's going on in another business. So what they do is they hold introductory sessions with people from different businesses telling you what their business is about. And you can have a QA and a with them as well to learn more about what this investment bank does and what its different pillars are. So that's another good thing that Deutsche has. Um, yeah, I think other than that, you are obviously allotted a buddy and a mentor who you can talk to your problems about. Uh, who will guide you throughout the whole internship and yeah they're really very helpful they will uh, take out as much time as you want uh, them to and yeah it's a great experience and all in all so let's get to the next question Okay, uh, so which other uh, firms hire for your particular profile in IIT Kharagpur? Anyone of the panelists can go first if you like to. Okay, so basically for software profiles, like almost every company that comes to KGP has a software profile, but yeah, definitely like all the software companies do have a software profile and you can apply for them. Like almost all the tech companies you can name, all of them hire like all of them which are which have some office in India do hire from KGB. Okay, anyone else would like to give their insight? Yeah, so for data science roles uh, in the internship process, in our case, uh, there were they weren't that much of companies which came to hire for that this role, but this year it uh, the stats rose and. Like there were many companies like Flipkart, Data Science, Amazon, ML, uh, Gartner, Adobe, and there were many companies which were uh, hiring for the analyst roles and also particularly in deep learning roles. Like Sony Japan was uh, came only for uh, research based deep learning roles. So if someone is interested, he uh, he can uh, he or she can definitely apply there. Yeah, we don't have that much of plethora of companies as Abhijay said for the software, but yeah, companies do come for data science. Um, I think for finance, other than Deutsche, there's uh, Nomura, there's Credit Suisse. A lot of investment banks are there and other finance related profiles as well. There's American Express, MasterCard, um, I think JPM, JPM sees there, Morgan Stanley. So you have a lot of options uh, for placements as well as internships. So um, yeah, and each of these are i think uh, at least for this year they also like um, expanded on their hiring so if you're uh, if this trend continues then um, yeah it'll be great right uh, and for quant so quant itself as described in kgp majorly includes of two different sites so one is quantitative trading and another is the analyst roles so for quantitative trading, there are uh, this year saw we saw many companies come for quantitative trading roles, which basically involved HFTs like Quadi, APD portfolio, NK Securities, etc. Apart from that, for analyst roles, there are, there is Credit Suisse that mostly comes for internships and not for placements. Then uh, there are in major investment banks like Goldman, Nomura, Credit Suisse. This year, it, Morgan Stanley also came for quant roles. So yeah, these are the companies. So we surprised that the query form and received a few questions. The following are those questions. 
what is the work we get to do once we are selected as a software developer? Is it more like what people do in open source? Avicii, would you like to answer this? Okay, yeah. So, so what happens in open source is that you are the you are perhaps the only guy who is working for your particular part, and like there's a bunch of other guys who are working on different other components of the the whole project, right? But in uh, but like in software engineering, what happens is there's a clear uh, defined role that you have to do, and like you can also communicate with other members of the team to understand uh, like what part they have to do in it. So basically, like there's a team and you are the youngest member of the team. So you need to understand what part of the work has already been done by the senior members of the team. And then you need to like uh, enhance upon that. And maybe you need to continue. Uh, yeah. Like your part will be very well defined rather than open source. Okay, also like what are the CS concepts apart from CPR required for a software problem like TBMS groups are those required? Yeah, like uh, as I mentioned already, so like it may happen that in your interviews, the interview directly starts with DBMS, OOPS, computer networks, etc. So yes, like uh, it is always helpful if you, you you are prepared with those before you sit for the interviews. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Abhijay. Moving on to the next question. Is it possible to change roles in the future if you went for a particular role, but after some years decided to switch to core or vice versa? Is this doable? So like any of our panelists would like to take up this question. Yeah, it's completely possible to switch roles like. Yeah, like I said that I, I myself was into core engineering for the first two years of my college life and then. I switch to ML and data science. And also, if you are placed in some company um, after these four years of life, you are still at max 22 years of age, and then it's not the final company you are working on. You can definitely explore the fields and uh, build your skill set. And if you think that you want to switch your company or switch the role, you may definitely go for it. There's no harm in it. Okay, so like any of you would like to add anything else to this? Okay, then moving on. How exactly does a quant strat in turn help the investment bank in their revenue generation? Anshul or Rathar? Yeah, so the the work done by a quant strats or so as the name mentions it quant and strats so it so the the intern or that profile in general helps the helps the firm by you know it mo mostly works on data that can help that can help them like forecasting data for revenue generation or uh, it major major part involves risk man risk management like calculating value at risk and these are the these are few Im, uh, important points that are required by any investment bank to uh, make an investment. So make a trade, we can say. And this is this is the major part of work that is involved, and it is quite similar to a middle office or front office role. So yeah, that is another thing. Uh, and this is how the intern or profile in general helps the bank. Um, adding on to that, I, um, as a as an intern, uh, you might not be um, expected to work on what your the desk allotted to you does a certain uh, has a certain work based amount of work that they do on a daily basis, right? You might not be expected to do that work itself. They can allot you the work which uh, they want to um, explore they, like for example in my case i had to do research work which not a lot of their current employees would be uh, doing right they would be working on their daily desk trades and like anshul said managing certain risks or calculating the ar any any such work that they usually do on a daily basis they'd be involved with that so they'd be allotting you work which they would think would help them in the future uh, making their models better or making uh, certain processes more efficient in the bank, uh, looking for solutions to uh, 
different problems that they face in their softwares, any anything as such. So that helps them in the future. So that's like an investment for them, right? So yeah, I hope that answers the question. Yes. So let's go to the next question. How should one start with the field of consulting? What are the books that needed to be studied? Need to be studied. Parth, would you like to answer this question? There's no particular book to be studied in consulting. It's good to have a structured way of thinking. You know, read books that teach you how to think, not what to think. Basically, what I would suggest is there are a lot of books like uh, there's the McKinsey Way written by McKinsey consultants. There are several other books on thought leadership. There's no particular book per se that you that would you know prepare you for a consulting role. For the interviews, definitely there are the number there are a number of books. You, know, you might have heard case in point, case interviews, that and whatnot. But to generate or to build that mindset, it's a totally different volume. You you know you have to talk to a lot of people, gather a lot of insights of different fields. Reading books in general, in general, reading books would not help per se. I mean, it will help you grow as a person, but as far as CDC internship, that short stint of yours is considered, uh, probably not a very good idea. Uh, once you start with the consulting career, it's good to read those books. To start with the field of consulting, uh, you know, go with the standard books, form a case group, practice cases and guesstimates with them. Uh, keep questioning, you know. How business, how different businesses work, what the key drivers of profits and revenue for different businesses are. Let's say uh, you are you're faced with a profitability case and you don't know, you know, what are the profit drivers for a particular type of company. Let's say for an e-commerce company, there could be various things that drive profits. So to start with consulting, basically, you know, practice a lot of cases. Do interns that require, you know, that require documentation, thinking, and ideation on a larger basis maybe go for product or other strategy ceo's office roles for books i would suggest just uh, probably start preparing with the consulting case book itself don't just read them prepare them with your buddy or you know a friend of yours who can be an interviewer and you can be an interviewee that would be the best practice to go for okay let's go to the next question Is prior knowledge of finance required to get into a finance profile? Any of the panelists would like to answer? So I think I mentioned uh, this. Uh, a lot of prior knowledge of finance is not required by most firms. So uh, in the case of Deutsche, I can tell you they definitely did not require you to have any finance knowledge. Uh, the shortlisting process itself does not uh, need you to have any previous interns in finance, any previous projects. Uh, your projects could be related to something else completely, but uh, you should have an in-depth knowledge of what you've done there. Uh, however, saying that, uh, like I said there, if you do have a basic knowledge, it does give you an edge. Uh, for example, like I said, there are group discussions in certain firms. So uh, like, for example, Nomura, they do have group discussions and uh, they their group discussions are a little different from the ones you can have in general. So they can um probably like just have three four people together and ask them certain uh certain basic questions about finance for example uh, a lot of people know about a certain thing called a black shoals model in derivatives so that's very commonly asked to a lot of people so these these certain small things which are there you can like probably gain knowledge of that but most firms you do not require any prior knowledge of finance So what is the difference between data science intern and machine learning intern and how you sh should prepare for either? So Pratyu, should you like to take up this question? Yeah, so uh, I won't go deep into this terminology because there are many terminologies like data science, data engineer, machine learning and everything. So uh, the basic preparation strategy for each one of them is uh, the same. You should have a good grasp of the algorithms and I have a uh, proficient, you should be proficient in Python programming. Uh, one thing I can say that in machine learning intern, um, more focus would be there on the analysis part. 
and you would be required to use statistics and more play would be there with the data sets like you should uh, be uh, you would be doing more thing uh, revolving around the data pre processing and then uh, feature engineering and everything and after that uh, you would step you would be performing or applying the machine learning algos uh, one by one and then checking the results so yeah and also in data science center the uh, feature engineering and data pre processing part does play a major role but after that uh, you would be uh, re required to devise some uh, new techniques like which won't be that much of conventional uh, like you have to try out uh, different things and then uh, uh, in data science you are expected that you should know a bit a bit of deep learning and everything because that would be applied there and for both yeah like for preparation you have to be proficient with probability statistics because that is asked in the interviews and again i am telling that during the internship you won't be required to uh, use them and uh, one more thing that in most in many companies uh, regarding data science now they are also asking dbms because you would be dealing with huge data sets as i said that uh, in my case the original data set size was size was 80 to 100 gb so you have to deal with the data sets like cleaning the data retrieving it and then uh, sorting and everything in the cosmos uh, database storage for that you would be required to run uh, sql or c sharp scripts on that so and a basic knowledge of cloud uh, like how to use cloud uh, maybe azure or uh, aws would be fine because uh, you have to deploy the code on the cloud clusters they are not on your own machine so not that much deep but yeah like how, what does cloud does and how to deploy codes and everything a basic knowledge would be fine apart from the uh, major theoretical requirements Okay, so like we are to the uh, end of our session, so like we have some time left, so we are open to questions. Like if you and if you have any questions in the audience, you can either raise your hands and we'll unmute you, or you, we can like you can let us leave it in the chat. So one of the questions that we have in the audience is: What's the difference between a quant trader and a quant analyst? Uh, right, so. Quant trader, you can consider it to be a person who develops algorithms to especially carry out, uh, mostly carry out trading, uh, to carry out trades in various different stock markets. Uh, apart from that, a quant analyst is a person who helps, uh, who does, apart from that, a quant analyst is a person who can do, uh, who, he can also do the trading, but apart from that, he also does things like forecasting models, uh, generating data, and uh, visualizing data as such for different investment banks and firms. So quant data is a term that is mostly, usually mostly used for trading in HFTs and mid frequency trading funds. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. So let's wait for one or two minutes. Like if any audience has any more questions, they can put up in the chat or like raise their hands. Uh, can anyone unmute uh, uh, Prathamesh? He has some question. He has raised his hand. So I wanted to ask, what did you guys uh, give up in these four years to be where you are right now? Interesting question. Would any of our panelists like to take up? There's actually nothing to give up per se. I think all of our panelists have you know, pretty much life as well and balance things out. Someone anything to you know, get the desired role. Basically managing your time in the right way. Don't think of it like you'll have to give up, you know, chilling out with your friends or something. You usually uh, you prepare for some time and then you enjoy for some time. You don't give up on anything. 
Yeah, very rightly said by Mark. Like you don't have to sacrifice your happiness or anything to get success. You just need to learn how to balance things. And uh, yeah, I totally agree with Mark. That first, uh, first you just learn and do something during the day, and then you just reward yourself by chilling out with your friends and everything. Don't have to sacrifice anything. Okay, so another question: How can we apply for internships with consulting firms like uh, Kearney, if I'm spelling it right, and after second year? How can we apply for internships at consulting firms like Kearney, etc., after second years? To apply for consulting firms like Kearney and all, uh, probably reach out to the seniors that are working at Kearney or any other consulting firm, and the procedure is pretty much same. We'll be asked, you know, one two rounds, one two three rounds. I personally. Applied to two firms, Carney and uh, there's another firm called uh, Frost and Sullivan. Had offers from both of them, but uh, the process is the same. That they last you two, three case rounds. The main thing to look out for the role is uh, at Carney. The role I was being offered was actually not proper consulting. It was more as a research associate. E Y Parton was also offering a similar role. So if you want to work a proper consulting role, that's a very slight chance that you will get. Probably with uh, boutique firms like uh, Frost that I worked with or IQVIA, you will get an opportunity to work as a proper consulting intern. But if you go for Carney, uh, EYP, and other you know big names in consulting, you will probably be tasked with a research associate. Well, you will probably be do probably will be doing grunt work and you know research going through Google and all. So. Uh, Try best to get a role that is actually inclined towards consulting and not, uh, you know, this uh, so re googling and uh, putting down things in documents. On the other hand, the brand value of EY Parthman and uh, Carney will definitely give you a major spike on your CV while you sit for CDC placement. So it's a uh, kind of a bias way in trade off. So uh, look at it that way. Only. Yeah, Shudeep, you can unmute and ask your question. Hello, Shudeep, you have raised your hand. If you have any question, you can unmute and ask it. Okay, we got one question from Akshit. Are there any other technical roles companies hire other than software development or data science on campus? Okay, so would you like to answer this? Repeat the question. Yeah, I cannot actually understand yes. what he means by this. Uh, uh, like I think in, uh, I'm also not sure. Like uh, Akshit, can you elaborate what you meant by this question? The question was: Are there any other technical roles companies hire other than software development or data science on campus? I think what he means to ask is like: uh, Are there roles like uh, web development and Android development? App development do they come on campus? I'm just uh, this is just guesswork. So it's not quite clear to me what he's trying to ask. Okay, so like uh, in our company, what happens is uh, machine learning interns or uh, like those kind of people are also taken as software development interns only, and then they are assigned those works. So, yeah. And like generally, currently, uh, all the software development work that you will be doing as interns will either be web development or will be app development, like as far as I know. Okay, so since we don't have any more questions before we end today's session, would any of our panelists like to add anything? Okay, so yeah, so cloud security basically uh, one of the three interns that were hired at Salesforce worked on cloud security. So he was also taken as a software engineering intern himself. 
uh, okay coming to the next question the technologies that i used during my intern is uh, java that is a spring boot framework and uh, what happened was like before i started my intern uh, there was like uh, there was a general list of the technologies which we need to learn so they gave it to us uh, b two weeks before the intern started and they all, like the company also provided to us uh, free uh, like e learning uh, platforms uh, links to them like plural sites and coursera so those courses were made free for us and uh, coming to languages uh, the language which i used was mm, like java for the back end and for the front end i used javascript uh, the react framework of javascript and html css uh, yeah and okay and what other technologies so uh, coming to other technologies for back end like we used mongodb and postgresql for databases and yeah and like uh, i also learned how to use postman to yeah so uh, I also learned Postman and some other like uh, like Docker, etc. Used a bit. So those technologies you'll you'll actually get to know them while working. So while you are working, the mentor that is assigned to you, like he will generally he or she will generally like introduce you to those uh, texts if you don't actually have used them. It was a great event today. I would thank all, all the panelists for their valuable time and sharing their wonderful insights with us. I would also like to thank the team of Student Welfare Group for making this event a success and everyone for attending this event. Thank you. Thank you. All the best guys. To do reach out all the you. best. Yeah, all the best. Yeah, all the best. Hopefully you all be will be having offline internships. So that would be hopefully you'll be replacing it replacing us next time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Bye.